Okay, now listen, baby driver. We've got to turn at this street, turn left at this street, and then turn, take a turn down this alley. Our contact is going to meet us at the end of this alley. It's very important that we take this route because if we don't show up, then we're gonna, there's gonna be trouble. The contact will blow the whistle. We have to make it at this time. We have to turn left down this street into this alley. Do you see that? Are you listening to me, baby driver? Where are you going, baby driver? I don't know, I'm driving somewhere. Where the hell am I? Hello and welcome to Random Movie Time. Today's feature is the 2017 action drama Baby Driver, directed by Edgar Wright and starring Ansel Elgort, Kevin Spacey, and Lily James. So this tells the story of a getaway driver for a small criminal organization, and he has to pick them up whenever they do heists at a bank and drive them around so that they can escape the police. And one day when he thinks he's out and he can go on his final mission for them, they actually pull him back in. So he comes up with a scheme where he could possibly leave town with his new girlfriend and get some money out of the deal. And a lot of high-speed hijinks with the police ensue. Well, what did you think of this movie, Shannon? Uh, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. Um, so... Some bright points for me for this film was um, the cinematography was really good. I mean, uh, the first chase scene, the first getaway scene was really well done, especially. There were some really cool shots that you don't normally see in, in an action film. Um, like, there were some really good, uh, there was like some Dutch angles, some interesting cuts, like, from the, you know, to the wheels, to the actors, close up of the actors' faces, to just the car, the colors in the city. So that was really cool. There were some really nice things about that. Um, and related to that, uh, the color palette of the film was, was interesting. Um, Edgar Wright, who directed it, as Tommy has said, uh, is pretty known for his attention to that sort of thing like um, I never saw last night in Soho but from what I've seen it looks like the colors played a big part in that and the mood lighting and all of that um, and of course he did all the the Shaun of the Dead and the Hot Fuzz and all those too uh, but it and it also Scott Pilgrim he he directed Scott Pilgrim Saves the World and that well, it's based on a comic book, so the colors are really important in that. In this one in particular, he focuses on the color palettes, especially of the characters. So, uh, the main character, played by, I think that's Ansel Elgort, right? The baby driver. Mm -hmm. He is mainly sports neutral colors, gray colors, I suppose, to jive with his kind of moral uh, ambiguity. Um, black, blacks and whites and things, beiges, things like that. Uh, and his waitress girlfriend who, um, who is not involved and she doesn't even know really until near the end of the film that he's involved in crime and that sort of crime. She's like a waitress when she's at work, she's wearing black and white. So, you know, it's kind of whatever, blah. but then outside of work, she wears things like, you know, pinks and you know, 
comforting colors and stuff like that. Um, the uh, the main uh, the boss played by Kevin Spacey. You know, he's wearing green to signify greed, I guess, and grays to kind of tie in with Baby Driver. And then, of course, there is like a really violent guy that he hires to do the heists, uh, played by Jamie Foxx, who, who wears red all the time. And So, you know, you get the idea. I'm not going to go on and on about that, but that, that was obviously um, something that they put a lot of thought in. And where I thought it was a little heavy handed sometimes, I thought it, it really, the color is, the color palette was really well done. And, um, it's not like Shape of Water that was like, <laughs> really hit you over the head <laughs> with what he was trying to convey. Um, I thought the soundtrack was really amazing. I loved most of the music on the soundtrack. The majority of it was kind of old soul and old kind of old songs and things like that um, and it was a part of the um, the landscape of the movie so it was really really involved and integral part of the movie in fact the film and the actors kind of moved with the mu music it was it was part of the part of it was another actor I guess too in a way the actors themselves uh, I think Baby Driver, the guy who played Baby Driver, Ansel Elgort, uh, he did a, a decent job, but I mean, he didn't really have to do much. Um, and, uh, but mind you, he did have to verb, uh, communicate non-verbally a lot with, um, his, the guy who played his foster father who was deaf. Um, so I thought he did, he physically, he did a really good job. Uh. Uh, John Hamm also plays one of the gang in this film, and I like John Hamm a lot. Um, but I felt his, he didn't really, they didn't really give him much to work with in this film, so I, I wasn't that overly impressed with, with him in this one. Uh, not because of his acting skill, but just because it wasn't a great, it wasn't much to the character, it was pretty 2D. Um, heads and shoulders for me, the best job the acting job in this film was Kevin Spacey and I know this might be controversial given everything that's gone on with Kevin Spacey but Kevin Spacey was always one of my favorite actors I always thought he was amazing in everything he did and I was so disappointed when I found out what happened but we're not doing a film about or a video about <laughs> about controversies uh, but I, I love Kevin Spacey and he really, really put a lot into this boss character. Um, it, and it shows it's really, really well done. Uh, that's the other thing about, um, this film where I feel it falls apart is, uh, one thing that, that falls apart in this film for me is that it's kind of trying to be deep and it's trying to do deep dives into characters and their motivations and their feelings but by the same token it's trying to be a fun getaway heist movie and it might be possible to do both but this doesn't for me this doesn't succeed um the the chase scenes are really well done but i felt that the characters are a little it was just a little shallow. So this is just one of those rare occasions where I think the film would have benefited from being a simple, amusing, less involved plot where you just kind of did the really fancy, nice little car chases, did the little fun heist things. It kind of reminded me of Grand Theft Auto V at first which I really like because I love that video game <laughs> and if it would have stayed on that track it would have to me it would have been a lot better but they're just trying too hard to make it um, a deep character study and it, it was it was a failure and baby driver was a real asshole <laughs> he was a jerk he was like this foster father uh, baby driver's uh, 
has a foster father who's been looking at after him for for many years since he was a little little kid and he's you know the foster father's deaf and um he's in a wheelchair and you know spoiler alert baby driver gets his foster father is placed trashed and then he drops him off at a home on a you know he drops him off at some care home on the doorstep in the middle of the night well it's a little tape recorder note for the for the nurses or whatever but he kind of dumps him off when he, <laughs> he's trying to get away and I thought that was kind of an asshole move <laughs> but uh yeah so those are some points for me about this film and I thought it was uh, it, it would have been better if it weren't trying to be too deep what about you Tommy <laughs> Yeah, well, unfortunately, you said everything that I was going to say about oh. it, but that's okay. <laughs> you <There's>, chimed in. <laughs> there's one thing I could add, which is um, a friend of ours, we watched this movie with a friend of ours who pointed out that the two women characters in this movie were really written in a very shallow way, like they were, like they were really, like, caricatures and, like, yeah, it was absolutely true, like really thankless roles for these two women unbelievable female characters not in a good way just in the way that you can't believe them mm -hmm. and uh, i'm surprised because usually i like edgar wright's movies a lot i i like all the uh cornetto trilogy i like scott pilgrim mm -hmm. i've heard good things about last night in soho though i haven't seen it yet and that is apparently a movie with a very strong female character uh in terms of a, just a female character that's very well written. And I thought that the characters in Scott Pilgrim were well written too. So, yeah. Uh, just very good action sequences, you know, um, very inventive. Um, so I appreciated it on that level. Uh, the music worked. I never think that it's a big accomplishment when the soundtrack is full of, you know, pop songs that they didn't write especially for the film. Mm -hmm. it's like, I mean, anybody can just pull out some good pop songs from the past and put that on a soundtrack. So that didn't impress me much, although I liked the music that they chose. Um, but yeah, just an okay action movie. I'm really surprised that it did as well as it did. Like, uh, mm -hmm. And like you, I think the best part about it was Kevin Spacey and, you know, I know he's cancelled now, but I mean, the fact of the matter is that he's a really good charismatic actor and uh, it was nice seeing him again because obviously we haven't seen him for a while uh, and we probably won't see him very often in the future. But anyway, yeah, that's about it. So, how many uh, getaway cars would you give this one out of five, Shannon? <laughs> getaway cars. Man, if only we, we did, like, quarters instead of just halves. Uh, I don't think... You can do a quarter, why not? Can I? Yeah. Okay. Um, we did negatives before, so... Oh, that's true. <laughs> All right, well, I will give it two and a quarter getaway cars well two getaway cars and a quarter <laughs> mm. uh, just because yeah I think we went over it it was um, I think it was taking on too much and it failed um, and even though there were some good actors in there it failed the actors too with the exception of Kevin Spacey who did an amazing job um, yeah uh, and great cinematography the shots were the chase scenes were really amazing uh, and but they should have just stuck with those instead of trying to put a little depth in there and that's where it fell down for me okay. what about you tommy how many getaway cars yeah i'll give it two and a half um you're right about the depth it didn't need as much it reminded me in that way of uh that movie cowboys versus aliens oh yeah <laughs> because you know it sounds like a fun concept like can't miss but then they added all this stupid 
you know, supposed character development and all of this in, in that movie, which just dragged the whole concept right down to the ground. And mm -hmm. I think that was going on a little bit in this movie too. Yeah. Would have been funner as a simpler, simpler heist type of show. Yeah. And part of the part of the thing that got me too is that it felt like they were just uh, sometimes they were just going for that. Sometimes they were just writing simple you know, simple characters that you'd expect in a film like this, like the, yeah, like the 2D girlfriends and the, and Jamie Foxx who plays like a really just, he has no depth at all. He's just, you know, Paper Mario angry, Paper Wario, I guess. He was just angry all the time and wanted to kill everybody. He was never nice. Uh, so sometimes they were going for that, you know, and that would have been fine if it was just a silly getaway heist movie, whatever. But but then they throw this backstory in for Baby Driver, and it was just stupid. <laughs> like it wasn't a stupid backstory, but it was just it didn't fit. Yeah. All right. So with that, I guess we'll get back in the car, and hopefully we don't hit any cows in that field. No. But uh, until next time, we'll see you on Random, Random Movie Time. time.